three, two, one. What's happening, guys? It's Logan Robinson from here. The Spirit presented to you by NoGamey.com. We are here with our instant reaction to Florida State's saddening game here in Toe Campbell Stadium. Now three straight losses for Mike Nobel and the Florida State Seminoles. This time it's to Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers, 34 to 28. Florida State scores 14 in the fourth quarter. That just doesn't do enough. Gentlemen, with me this evening is Dustin Lewis, our editor-in-chief, and then down below is our lead basketball writer, Austin VZ. First reactions, guys. They almost tried to have a little something there at the end, a little onside kick action goes straight to the Clemson defender. That practically wraps it up, and then you get some – you just want to see a little bit more Will Shipley, don't you? He sure does, and he goes and gets a first down and practically wraps up everything. First thoughts, how are we feeling? Disappointed. You know, Florida State, they came out of the gate, put a touchdown on the board. Jordan Travis made a terrific juke move on that 20-yard touchdown run. And right there, Florida State had Clemson on the ropes early. Going Goes on the defense. It's not a three and out, but they still force a Clemson punt. Micah Pittman with a – it was either a 31 or a 34-yard return up the right side to give FSU field position at the 50. And it's like you're sitting here early in the first quarter. You're up 7 nothing. You have a chance to go up two scores on the number four team in the country. Instead, come out with a negative play. Jordan Travis gets sacked at the end of the drive. You punt right back, a short punt to Clemson. Um, blitz Kevin Knowles off the edge. He's not able to get home on the blitz on DJ. Wide open receiver down the sideline. And from there, it felt like Clemson found their stride in Tallahassee where FSU had them a little bit out of their rhythm early on, but they settled down and made some tremendous plays. And, you know, we saw what Clemson was able to do during those second and third quarters with the 27 to nothing scoring run. And I mean, from there, that was pretty much the ball game. I know Florida State was able to get a couple touchdowns in the fourth quarter, but that was at a point where Clemson was just trying to run as much clock out as possible before flying back up to South Carolina with a win. It was just one of those games with missed opportunities. I mean, you felt like it was pretty, pretty even blow for blow for the most part, for the first half, and then that Jordan Travis fumble on the sack with 47 seconds left just killed it. I mean, any momentum Florida State had went straight to Clemson. They scored a touchdown before the half. You're up, what was it, 10 at that point. Then they come right out. Will Shipley returns for 69 yards. And first play, flea flicker touchdown out of the half. That's, that's a 17-point swing in a span of, you know, two minutes. And that's just huge, huge momentum killer. Anything Florida State had going up to that point is pretty much right out the window. And they still almost found a way back. You know, I jokingly said after we they got that first touchdown in the fourth quarter that, man, imagine if, you know, Travis and Johnny Wilson had connected on one of those fade routes. We'd have a much different conversation. We really would have been now looking back at it. If they can get the time right on one of those two jump balls, it's a much different conversation about this game potentially. And it's, uh, you know. I, I don't think any of us expected us to come away with a win. But at the same time, at, le- at least they showed some fight. You know, a lot of teams being down 20 at home would have just, you know, let's pack it up, get to the bye week, get healthy. But, you know, they fought their, they fought their butts off. Yeah, that Will Shipley return there, what, 69 yards, was it? Coming out of the half, just absolutely sent a <clears throat> dagger almost. He felt it inside of the stadium. And this game wasn't over at halftime. Florida State was well in it. And just little mistakes there. We talked with Mike Norvell after the game and just really disappointed and just the simple things that they felt like they were making mistakes on. Derek McLendon heard from him, just said that his, the number one word he said was execution. And they felt like there was a lot of times during this game where they did not execute on just a few plays that ended up hurting them. You know, they were able to do anything on offense in that first bit of the game. And it was hurting Florida State, put them in a rough spot to have to come back. You had the Jordan Travis fumbled there, you know, Robert Scott. Junior had a really rough game off the edge. Um, you know, not not like everybody else did a phenomenal job. I, th- I thought Florida State opened up some holes, though. Lawrence Toffoli, Trey Benson felt like this team at the front did some job. And they did open up holes for the running game. Both both running backs, I believe Trey Benson went six, 69 yards. Lawrence Toffoli went 68. Jordan Travis just a little bit below there. You know, Florida State was able to find the running game. That was, that was a stunner to us up in the press box watching Florida State be able to navigate there on the ground against Clemson's lethal front seven. They were able to do that and balance it up a little bit, but just simple mistakes here and there really crushed them. And that's what ended up, you know, hurting them in the end. They honestly should have run them more. I mean, Trey Benson was averaging almost 10 yards a carry and overall Florida state ran for six yards a carry pretty much doubling what any other team had done 
up to that point against Clemson. It, it was really impressive what the running game was able to do. And, you know, obviously when you're down 20, you can only do so much to try and get back in the game. But they, they honestly should have kept with it. You know, the running game was doing a phenomenal job. And that offensive line was creating holes. And the running backs were getting north and south, which is something we talked about in on Wednesday's podcast. Just get north and south. Don't get east and west against this athletic defense. And, you know, Benson and Tofili were hitting those holes and going. I think if there's something positive that you are taking away from tonight, it is the production that Florida State was able to put up on the ground. Because like you said, Clemson, number two rushing defense in the country coming into this game, had only given up two rushing touchdowns on the season. And by five seconds into the second quarter, Florida State was pushing towards 100 yards on the ground and had already scored two rushing touchdowns. So, I mean, they did what they needed to do against that Clemson defense. We saw Trey Benson have a couple long runs where he was able to break some tackles. It looked like one that he was going to take for a touchdown, but he cut back and lost his balance. Jordan was able to get a couple things going on the ground. Lawrence Toa Philly, especially late in the fourth quarter, had a couple bursts. And, I mean, you look at it, Jordan Travis, 64 yards. Lawrence, Lawrence Toa Philly, 68 yards. And then Trey Benson, 69 yards. All three of those guys stepped up with Treshawn Ward out of the lineup. And, I mean, they gave Florida State a chance to win with what they are able to do with their legs. But some mistakes in the passing game, some some breakdowns in protections really killed Florida State in the passing game. Yeah, there was, there was times where those that defensive line just lived up to the Pin their ears and, back. <laughs> that, that one play in the red zone where I, I forget which edge came off the, the left side of the offensive line and just – completely blew up the zone read like he could have tackled three players at one time um it's like what are you what are you supposed to do with that you know there was a few plays like that all night it was just like there's some things you can't do against that defensive line and for the for the most part of that first quarter Norvell was doing a good job of adjusting around that you know with the quick screens to the wide receivers and the running backs you know getting the running backs out and running he was doing a good job of that in the first quarter and then Clemson ended up adjusting to it yeah, exactly. Yeah. I thought Florida State, they came out, they took advantage of Clemson's aggressiveness and how they wanted to blitz early in that game. And it worked out with those runs and, and the short screen passes on the scripted drive. But yeah, as things went on, I mean, Florida State, they just simply didn't make plays. You know, we saw they didn't execute on the, the pass to Johnny Wilson um, in the, the fourth quarter. And then in the first half, Florida State went for it um, in Clemson territory, threw deep to Johnny Wilson on a pass that was deflected by a Clemson defender. And, and Jordan Travis had a wide open player in the flat. If he would have checked down, it would have been a first down. Florida State would have extended that drive and potentially scored. So just once again, you know, you start to see this team begin to press whenever they're trailing in a football game. They're going for the kill shot instead of taking what's available to them. You know, you could have extended a drive. Instead, you flip it right back over to Clemson. They go down and score to take the lead before half. So, you know, Florida State only lost by one possession in their last three games to these ranked opponents. They're, I mean, it's frustrating. You know, they're they're right there, very close to pulling off an upset against Wake Forest, North Carolina State, and Clemson. I mean, man, you're a couple plays away from going three and zero in this stretch. Instead, you go zero and three, you know, four and zero to four and three, and we're going to see if FSU can pull something out over these last five games to uh, respond and get to the postseason. It, it, it's it's so funny. I, I've loved the argument the last two weeks from the, like, let's just talk about the Johnny Wilson too deep two fade routes real quick. I love the like everyone was talking about. Oh, why are we throwing the fade route to Micah Pittman? Well, here you go. You get two fade routes to six foot seven Johnny Wilson. It's exactly what you want, but the time is a little bit off, and everyone's going, "Well, why are we throwing two straight fade routes to a six seven guy?" At this point, what do you guys want? Honestly, he was one on one, had plenty of space. Just. You know, time is just a little bit off. Got a Something. better throw. Yeah, yeah. yeah, honestly, honestly, those should have been better throws, you know. And, and on the defensive side of things, guys were in positions of just not making the plays. Shipley's an absolute animal. Um, I hope he just sits out all of next year to prepare for the draft. Um, but, like, there, there was times where uh, there was one play he gets to sweep out to the right edge. There's four guys in position to stop him on third and four. It just runs – the running back runs through all of them. Like, at that point, come on, man. Just make the play. And we talked about it too. Dustin, you brought it up. But one of the biggest things at Florida State, if they're going to have a chance in this game, it was discipline and getting rid of those flags. And they did a great job. And I think it was three flag, three penalties, what, 17 yards or something yep. to that yep. around there. Florida State did a great job there. So they made improvements, but then they take two steps forward and they take a step back. And when you're taking those steps, back when you're facing number four team it's Dabo Sweeney one of the smartest coaches in college football it's just not going to work out for you 
And I know it shows, yeah, one possession game here. The last two weeks, I think a little bit closer. This one just felt like you know, that it was kind of over after that Will Shipley 69-yard return. But this team continues to fight. They try to bounce back and, and go down the field. You saw Jordan Travis there connect and have a drive and eventually hit Kentron Portier. They have the onside kick. It doesn't go in their favor. But this team does continue to fight. You know, Derek McLennan said that this team – the next two weeks during their bye, they've got to get together as a team. You know, they, they can't let these three straight losses hurt them. And they got to keep their bond together, not just the players, but the coaches included, you know. And they've got a lot of games in this stretch here that we'll talk about where they can go on a run here and win, just like how they'd start off uh, to begin this season. But this team has got to stay focused in. Uh, at least there's signs of continued fight, but it just crushes you. And I couldn't imagine being in that locker room too in Mike Norvell where you see the ability of this team and it just cannot get the job finished. They're, they're so close. You can see it. They, these guys are so close to being where we think they need to be. The team needs a little bit more depth, a little bit more – I don't even know the right word. They just need a little bit more time, and obviously it's a very impatient fan base. It always will be. It's Florida State football. They want to be good. They expect to be good. They're just not quite there, and they're so, 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 so close. It's definitely positive, though, that they kept on fighting because, you know, in, we talk about it all the time. Two, three, four years ago, Florida State gets down by two or three touchdowns, and, I mean, they just get blown out for the remainder of that game. So it did say something. I know Clemson was starting to – to let off a little bit, but for Florida State to respond in that fourth quarter and, I mean, make it come down to the final minute, that does tell me something about this team, you know, taking a top five team in the country to the final whistle. But, I mean, we've got to talk about this defense and the halftime adjustments because it's just not simply happening right now. Over the last three games, Florida State has given up a touchdown to start the second half to each of their, their last three opponents, you know, Wake. Wake came out and scored, went up 28-7 to in that game. North Carolina at State came out and scored, cut it to 17-7 to to begin their comeback. And then Clemson tonight with the Will Shipley kickoff return and then the flea flicker. I, I can't even remember what they went up. What was it, 24 to – was it 31 or 24? Either way. 31 Either way. Three straight teams scored a touchdown, an easy touchdown coming out of the locker room against this Florida State defense. You've got to wonder, what is the halftime adjustment set – are going on because they're simply not working, and we're seeing that on the field. It's, it's fair, honestly. You know, Clemson ended up, what, 9 of 17 on third downs, yep. had 370 total yards, averaging 5.5 per play, and Will Shipley was just a man on a mission tonight. 20 carries for 121 yards. They they threw it to him six times for 48 yards. You know, that, that their game plan was simple. They didn't trust the interior of our defensive line and with Fabian love it out. I honestly don't blame them. Um, it's just like you get, sorry to interrupt, but like you get so damn close and it's gotta be irritating too for, I mean, Fuller along with Mike Norvell, where you have a great play call. You've got Kevin Knowles with the blitz off the side. You're going after DJ Clemson's quarterback, but since you aren't able to get the tackle there and create the sack, Boom, it opens up a wide open wide receiver down the field. Akeem Den is lost, doesn't know what's going on. You know, it's just easy six points for Clemson there. But you have that play call there. That's what's been going on the last few weeks. But you have a beautiful play call there, and it just doesn't execute, just like Derek McLennan said. No execution there, and it drills you. And it take, it's an easy seven points for Dabo Sweeney. And it doesn't get easy, any easier than that. And the play call was perfect. I think on both sides of the ball, execution was worse than the play calling. There's a lot of times guys are in the position just not making the plays, and sometimes it comes down to that. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, it's just little, little mistakes and mistakes. And like I said earlier, if you're going to face a team like this, it just ain't going to last long. It's the same way what happened against Wake Forest when we were here a few weeks ago. You're going to play teams like this that can go down the field and score. It's going to be hard to keep up. Definitely against a defense – which we've talked about very highly. And I brought it up earlier. I mean, this team had the chance to respond. I really like the way the players came in and talked to us after the game. And they feel an urgency to get back to work and get back and make sure that the bond is still there because that's something Florida State has lost. We're seeing the transformation on the field of fighting in games. They still have the rest of the second half of this season to go. I'm wondering how that's going to look. And from what I heard from the team, it seems positive. There's optimism there that this team is going to go into bye week. Mike Norvell talked about Fabian Lovett 
during the press uh, during the press conference says that he feels optimistic that he is going to be available after the bye week when Florida State is going to face Georgia Tech here in Doe Campbell Stadium. He said that he felt like he could have been a little bit close. They tried a little bit near the uh, late half of this week, but just couldn't be ready for tonight. Fabian Lovett has been hurt since the LSU game hasn't been out here for FSU dressed up. It would be a big time addition for the Seminoles to get one of their star defensive players back on that line in two weeks. Spy week comes at a perfect time. You know, we've talked a lot. This team is beat up on both sides of the ball. The offensive line has some guys that aren't hundred percent. You know, we know about Fabian Lovett, but even further, you know, Jared verse probably isn't hundred percent right now. Some other guys on the D line and just, just around the team. This is a beat up football team right now. They played, what is it? Four or five straight games heading into this bye week and we've talked about it so much over the last couple of episodes but Florida State they've just been hit with bad injury luck this season so hopefully this time off ahead of this five game stretch where they're gonna have to win at least two games to get to a bowl game out of the final five they'll be healthy enough over this next week and be able to get it rolling again starting with Georgia Tech who looked like a cupcake a couple of weeks ago now Georgia Tech beat Pittsburgh um, beat Duke, who's had a better season than expected so far in 2022. When you come out of that bye week and face the Yellow Jackets at home, you're going to want them, going to want to take them quite seriously because they've proven under interim head coach uh, Brent Key that they've still got some fight in them. It, it, it's definitely a manageable schedule, though, for, for these last five games, you know, at home against Georgia Tech. Then you go at Miami, at Syracuse, home against Louisiana, home against Florida, to finish it off. It, it's mm-hmm. manageable. I mean, I personally, you would. Personally, I, you should be at minimum three and two in mm-hmm. those five games, and four and one's definitely not out of the question. You know, Syracuse yeah, was, is much better than we thought we'd any any of us thought we'd be. I was say, on here saying he'd be, be fired four games in, um, and now they're six and zero. Oh. <laughs> um, Florida hasn't looked that great. Miami hasn't looked that great. That there's no reason. Honestly, I don't think there's a reason they can't go four and one in these last five games. And I think it's a good opportunity for these guys to show that they're hungry. You know, obviously, these last three games haven't gone the way they wanted to get that bye week, get healthy, get refocused and come out ready to whoop some ass against Georgia Tech. I think it's a perfect opportunity. We'll see what happens with the Syracuse game. But I think realistically, Florida State should be favored in four of these last five games. Georgia Tech has struggled. You know, Louisiana is Louisiana. Miami and Florida haven't been very good for consistent stretches so far this year. I know Miami, Miami was able to win and a close one earlier today at Virginia Tech and Florida State, or Florida State, Florida came up short at home, just like Florida State, um, to the Tigers of LSU. From Death Valley. Yeah, so I think Florida State, you know, the schedule opens up a little bit in these final five games, and we'll see. I I think the Seminoles, we have to remember, the the three teams that they just played are three of the very best teams in the ACC. They have a ton of guys that have been in that program for years, COVID seniors, especially when you think about Wake Forest, those are three really good teams that Florida State just played, and they came up barely short. But moving into this five-game stretch, you're not playing another team that's like Clemson, like NC State, like Wake Forest. You're, you're over that tough hump. And, and really, to me, the biggest regrettable game was NC State. That's a game they should have won. Yeah. The other two, like, I mean, it is what it is. It's Clemson, who's a top-five team, and you know the rest of the schedule is a breeze. They, they should be a playoff team. And then Wake's a damn good ACC team that's, you know, half their roster is full of sixth-year players, you know. Sometimes it's just like that. Yep. Um, really, really tough stretch for Florida State. They get through it. It's an 0-3 record there in that stretch. But tough, tough games, man. Tough. Uh, it blows. I know the fan base isn't too happy after you're having a really strong September to kick off the season. You're on national television over there in New Orleans, and all the hype is there. But – Kind of got a feeling of what this team is after this stretch. So close, one possession, one possession games, three straight 18, games in a row. Eighteen points separate Florida State from those three losses. Extremely irritating, to say the least, when you say it like that. And then, and we'll and we'll see how Florida State wants to uh, finish off this season. The next three games, like Austin was saying earlier, you've got Georgia Tech at home after the bye week. Then you're going to go down and face rival Miami. Mario Cristobal seems to be having a rough start to the season. Uh, not not looking so great for them after their game against Virginia Tech. And then um, then your next game is against uh, Louisiana Monroe. So, oh, Syrac- Syracuse, not Louisiana, Syracuse. 
at Syracuse, which that has been kind of a surprise this year. It's been kind of a surprise team there. So they're, they're fighting up there. They 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 face Clemson next, so that's going to be the real litmus test to see how good that that team in Syracuse is. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, also, real quick, I don't think we saw any injuries tonight. I know Jared Burst went down, but he got back up and ran over to the sideline. I don't think anybody. I think yeah. they came away pretty clean. Kevin Knowles was the same way. I know he left and then came back. Um, yeah, that's the only the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. Yeah, so rather rather optimism night there for Florida State on the injury side of things. Anything else, gentlemen? I don't think so. I think that's going to wrap it up. Florida State falls to Dabo winning the Clemson Tigers, number four ranked in the country, thirty four to twenty eight. We'll be back live on Wednesday night. Going through the bye week, we'll get you guys some updates on the press conference next week along with some practice updates. So appreciate everybody hanging out with us this evening. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, and we will talk to you guys next week on Hit a Spear. Peace.